Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Neil and it is time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? I am checking out the first episode of series 13, primarily because it features Chris McCausland. Now, I have seen one other episode with Chris. I can't remember. I, th I think it was one of the early episodes from season 14 when I first started watching What I Lied to You before I dove into my Bob Mortimer search and everything else. I literally just tried the first couple of episodes from series 14 and I think I caught a Chris McCausland episode in there. Really funny story about turning in, losing his keys, turning his keys into a lost and found, thinking they were somebody else's. Anyway, um, yeah, really entertaining. And so I'm going back to his appearance from season 13 and, and getting a little bit more of his story. Um, who else do we have in this episode? We've got uh, Gabby Logan. I know I've seen an episode with her. She's She used to be like a rhythmic gymnast and she told the story about tripping another kid during a, a parent-child race on the school sports day. John Sim. Why do I know that name? I don't I don't know who John Sim is, but I recognize that name. And uh, Angela Scanlon. I don't know Angela Scanlon, but John Sim's very familiar. Anyway, I'm not I'm not tuning into this episode for any particular story as far as I'm aware. But um, primarily to see more of Chris because uh, he's getting a lot of requests in the comments section. If there's someone that you'd like to see, make a comment in the comments section yourself and I will get around to it. I read those. I don't necessarily answer, to answer them all, but I, but I do notice them and I do dot, jot down suggestions and I will eventually get to yours. So um, yeah, let's watch uh, episode one from series 13 of Would I Lie to You. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a brilliant actor who says he gets upset when he works abroad because he misses his family so much. Like I said, he's a brilliant actor. <laughs> it's John Sim. Oh, he, he's the master been described from as Doctor the female Who. Gary Lineker, although she doesn't have right? big ears or stink of crisps. It's Gabby Logan. <laughs> She's the host of a Sunday morning show on Radio 2, which I find is the perfect listen for when I've just got in from clubbing. It's Angela Scanlon. <laughs> a comedian and actor who's appeared on CBeebies. He was almost late tonight because of rail replacement works on the Ninky Nonk. It's Chris McCausland. <laughs> OK, they offered me this in Braille, but it's, as blind people go, I'm pretty rubbish and I can't read any of that nonsense. So, <laughs> Lee, will you please do me the honours? For a whole month, I thought my neighbour was ignoring me and he thought I was ignoring him until he found out I was blind and I found out he was deaf. <laughs> <laughs> He's your next door neighbour, is that right? Um, Do you need me to read it again? Yeah. <laughs> There's three flats. I live in the middle and he lives on the bottom. And who lives upstairs? A policeman. He can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was being the rudest person that I've ever met from the day that he moved in, and I said hello to him, and he completely ignored me. <laughs> Maybe he didn't. Maybe he went... Well, I don't know what you're doing. And... <laughs> <laughs> Gabby, you have perfectly highlighted... <laughs> ..exactly what probably happened. Over the course of a month, there were separate incidents where we each thought the other was being rude. The first time that he was moving in, he was carrying boxes into the house. I shouted hello to him, and he never said anything back to me. And I thought, that's a bit rude. And you it? knew he was there just through hearing. Contrary to popular belief, deaf people do make a noise. <laughs> 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 Other occasions, I would be outside packing the car, unpacking the car. Not some... driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has to do that for okay. entirely legal reasons, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I could probably do the motorways if they had them things off the bowling alley down the side. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd, like, waved and smiled at me, 
and I'd not known he was there, completely blanked him. And then I'd heard him walk past, and I'd <laughs> shouted hello to him. <laughs> but I was talking to his back then, and he never answered me. How did it resolve itself? Yes. Did the policeman well, intervene? <laughs> I actually bumped into his mum, who was visiting, and I said, like, he's deaf, isn't he? And she said, yeah. That's a, that's a bold opening gambit. <laughs> <laughs> we have each other's mobile numbers now, and, um... We'll Hang on, let me think about this for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we have text messages, Lee. How do right, you, you read in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> My phone talks. It reads everything out. And just to give you an insight, even the emoji, it tells you what the emoji is. And the smiley face, specifically for blind people, that one is called smiling face with normal eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Took me by surprise that he's Australian, which you associated with the accent, don't you? But, like, he's just Australian in his head. <laughs> <laughs> If they don't have to put it on the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe it. I don't you believe think it. he made that up? <laughs> it's got to be true. You say, I believe it. I, believe I totally it. believe it. I'm not going to overrule my team, though. No, no, no. Oh, you haven't got the strength of character. I do. <laughs> it is 100% true. Yeah. <laughs> I once stripped naked, then accidentally climbed into bed with my father-in-law. <laughs> Were you drunk? Yes. It was our bedroom in our house, and they'd been babysitting. Noticed another presence in the bed, which I assumed to be my wife. Yeah. And well, so lovely I... thing to say about your wife. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've given yeah. up your superior bed yes. for the in-laws. Yeah. I make up a really lovely, lovely bed with uh, lovely silk sheets and a lovely thing and put that in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. think that your, your wife, she's gone ahead of you. I, I thought she'd be spark out. And I've often done this journey in the dark, so she's often in bed before me. <laughs> with the clothes off, round the side of the bed, leap in, give her a, a snuggle. Oh, oh no, no naked. <laughs> naked. Which way, <laughs> which way was he facing? Thank God he was back in Thank the other way. I spooned him. Like, that makes it better. I think it's worse. I think you'd have to have done it both ways to know which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But luckily, I wasn't quite that excited yet. <laughs> yes. No. I mean, I whip it back, the whip the thing. <laughs> as, as I'm sort of approaching the body in the bed, I hear John. And I, I literally flew out of bed. Ah! I'm trying to put my underpants back on. Oh, you're completely naked. naked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the whole thing. I'm trying to get my under got twisted, fell over. It was like a comic. It was ridiculous. Why would you go to the effort of trying to put your underpants on in front of them? Just it's grab them and leave. That's the sort of strategic decision you make when you're used to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> easily think I, I both want to leave and dress myself and make the mistake of trying to do the two things at once. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was very, very lovely about it and he went, uh, one too many last night? And I went, yeah. And that was it. Where was the mother-in-law? I'm going through. Yeah. I will go with my team and blame them and say it's true. It is, in fact, sadly, true. Oh, yeah. 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 Please welcome this week's special guest, Richard. Would you like me to describe him, by the way, with that help you suss out which of the three he might know? He looks quite a cool dude, actually, so we can rule out that he knows David. <laughs> uh, actually, I think you might know him because he's dressed as a policeman and he's not talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is Richard. He's the stunt horse rider who galloped me through a moonlit forest so I wouldn't miss the Man United-Bolton game. We were using horses in this production I was filming. We were in Scotland, and that's when he offered to help me. But what, what was it you said? You said he galloped you to a television. You got on the back, spooned yeah. behind him. Well, <laughs> and you were clothed. <laughs> Fully clothed. <laughs> and, you, and he literally pulled up outside the pub. You jumped off and ran into the pub like a desperate cowboy. Well, no, he came in with me. Oh, he came in with you? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, the tied it up outside you tied the... it up outside on the thing? <laughs> tie... What thing did you tie it to? Well, I, I didn't see. You got where you were going and you went into a bar and you didn't take the horse purely for the joke that would have followed. <laughs> <laughs> 
why, you why the long face? Yeah but, yeah. The yeah, but the reason why you've never heard that joke, Rob, is because people, it's a bit sensitive with you, isn't it? <laughs> you sound like you've got quite a little round face. <laughs> isn't that lovely? Yeah. No, thank you very much, yeah. Chris. I sound like it wasn't meant to be a compliment, but... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of faces did the rest of us say? Yeah, like that's we quite have? interesting, yeah. Take some time with Lee in particular. <laughs> <laughs> like a cheeky little monkey who's the only one that knows he's about to fling a poo. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed them. Nailed them. Please, can I use that on my posters for the next tour? <laughs> oh, David. <laughs> he sounds like he looks like a Toby jug of a duck. <laughs> <laughs> that is bang on. Yeah. <laughs> that is the image I go for. <laughs> I think this deaf neighbour of yours was right the first time. This is Richard. He is the flight attendant who persuaded me I wasn't dying, but I had trapped wind. What were your symptoms? I felt, like, uh, really breathless and... First. You had not in the window again, had you? <laughs> Where were you going to? We were going home. From? We were going from um, Gibraltar. Quite close to home at this point? No, quite early on in the flight, about okay. 10, 15 minutes into the flight, I started to feel a bit dodgy. Richard came down and he said, yeah. you all right? I thought I was dying. I thought I'd ruptured my appendix or something like that. And what kind of things did he say to calm you down? I think he said, well, if we do go down in the sea, don't worry, you're full of wind, you'll float for longer. <laughs> He kind of knelt down in his very caring way and said, there is a possibility this could be trapped wind, which filled me with horror. It was just going to all come out at some point, and that's embarrassing. Yeah, but um, better than dying. <laughs> he said to me, if we lower the plane... Well, so, the, uh, so your internal pressure would be less? So he said, there's a good chance it could come out, but I've got to warn you... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Does the science add up there that you're more likely to point, release wind? At this Otherwise, point... If, by that logic, everyone would be farting on takeoff. <laughs> so he said to the, the, the cockpit, mm. bring it down, and did they do that? Apparently, um, they did. Quick, bring the plane down, I think she might blow! Yeah. <laughs> Within a few seconds, uh, minutes maybe, yes. tiny, tiny, tiny little burp came out. That's it. I'm good. Did so everybody like... cheer and clap? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, when I the say that... The truth is, it, it didn't just... happen, guys. <laughs> When None I of this it, has ever happened. I don't sounds... think you've even ever been to Gibraltar. <laughs> the only bit of this that I believe is that you fart a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is Richard. He came to my aid at the local tip when I lost my specs in his great big skip. <laughs> <laughs> what were you getting rid of? I was getting... Not another body, David. <laughs> <laughs> Not another body, no. Yeah. Um, I, I bury them. <laughs> But no, this is two CD players yeah. and a DVD player. I put them in the small electrical goods skip thing. So I'm, I'm throw the things in uh, the skip, and they make a, a crashing sound. Yeah. And I lean in to see what I, the, what I in my mightiness have wrought. <laughs> and um, they slid down my sweaty. Toby Jug Duckby <laughs> and fell into the skip. Did you shout yeah. for help? I went, I went, excuse me. He appears, he goes into the skip. He said, it's all right, I'll go in and get them. And did you ask why? Why he'd go in and get them? Yeah. Why, did, did I want to talk him out of it? <laughs> <laughs> You'd said, could you go and get my glasses? <laughs> I quacked, he gave me some bread. <laughs> I said, actually, that's not good for me, I need seed. <laughs> So that's a stranger at the tip. <laughs> I'm gonna go the, the 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 horse stunt rider. It's early enough that it could be David. I don't know. Like that's trapped a... wind is very painful. We'll go, John. You're going, John. I think that's a fair surmise. I'm Richard, and I am the flight attendant that helped. Oh! No. <laughs> wow. the pilot to lower the plane. We were descending anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I did not see that coming. I once chatted to an old man because I felt sorry for him, <laughs> only to find out later he was a global megastar. Are we yeah. have to know who the global megastar yeah, is. Yeah, who, who, who was, was he? he? Um, it's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> wow. The BAFTAs. I was doing the red carpet thing for BBC Three. So I was, uh, you know, waiting for the next person to come up. It was, it was Michael Fassbender. And then I saw this 
you know, very refined, older gentleman standing there. And I thought he was maybe somebody's dad. <laughs> he looked a little bit lost and I thought, I'm just going to have a chat with him because it could be my dad and I'd want someone to have a chat with him. Are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> so you stepped away from your the cameraman and the crew. Yeah. So what did you say to him, Angela? I was like, is, this, is it your first time with the BAFTAs? <laughs> oh, no! And he said, um, no, actually, I've, I've been a few times, but not for quite a while. And I was like, OK, maybe he's not somebody's dad. OK, who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Oh, I thought you said, who are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just kept it loose, you know, who do you yes. want to win? Have you any favourites? It's been a strong year for film. You actually the said film. <laughs> <laughs> do you work in the films yourself, though? <laughs> <laughs> How did it conclude? And then I could feel the, the cameras coming towards us, and I just kept going. Cos you saw the cameras? Yeah. Well, you must have known that he was someone Yeah, prominent. obviously, but I can't ask him. Would be a great last question in the interview. <laughs> and just to sum up, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Does it ring true to you? Yes. Absolutely. You, everyone knows everyone God, would so. know what Steven Spielberg... But... We're going to go lie. I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true. I buy it. He's a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that the scores are tied. It's a draw. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. Wow. That episode went quickly. It felt like it went quickly anyway. Lots of good Chris stuff. Like the guy, is, I mean, obviously his his humor centers on his blindness, but it's freaking hilarious humor. I'm, I'm all for it. Like I, <laughs> it's, you know, it's very specific, but it's funny and you can, even though I would assume like 99% of his audience, not blind, it, it's it's universal humor, so I, I really enjoy him. I, I I see he's got an episode coming in uh, ep in series fifteen, coming out uh, presumably re rather soon. I know that usually uh, usually would I lie to you starts airing in the fall, although things are wonky with with COVID and lockdown and all the rest of it. But um, looking forward to seeing more of him in the future uh, and. I do remember Gabby. Angela feels familiar, but, you know, let's face it, there's... British television has a surfeit of pretty red-headed presenters. Um, I don't know what, what, what's going on, but there's plenty. So I might be confusing her with somebody else. And John Sim, man, it's 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 the master from Doctor Who. How how cool is that? So great episode. I'm glad I found this one. Uh, thanks to whoever it was that recommended it. I feel like it's. I know it's more than just one. A, a lot of people mentioned this one is w worth checking out. And uh, until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.